Hello gamers, welcome to another edition of tonight on Mage Hammer's Game Table, where tonight I am beginning a new campaign, solo campaign, featuring my Dells and Dangers Rules Life Fantasy role-playing game. You can download this as a uh, pay-what-you-want download from itch.io at the link in the description below. Um, this, uh, this is a privately printed copy, so I do not have currently have any hardcover solutions. But if you really, really want to, you could download the PDF and go to lulu.com and create a privately printed book for you. You have to pay for it, obviously, but if you really like to have books, that would be the way it is. As of right now, I don't have any plans, unfortunately, to uh, print the book or have any kind of print book currently. Uh, maybe in the future, who knows? But as of right now, it's a PDF only, but uh, doesn't stop you from going to Staples, lulu.com, or somewhere else and having your own... Um, book published so all right that is delves and dangers um first of all i want to thank everybody for all the support they've given me all of you who downloaded delves and dangers or commented about it uh those of you that uh have been very active in my facebook uh, mage hammers game table facebook fan page thank you for all your comments all the comments that i get in the uh in the videos Thank you so much. I love interacting uh, with you guys and, you know, make solo playing. Solo playing is fun for me, <laughs> uh, but solo playing on video and uh, being able to share my experiences with you all and then knowing that you are engaging in it with me just makes it that much sweeter. So uh, thank you so much for all the support and all the people that have um, been watching my videos. Uh, more to come. So this is a session zero. I'm starting a new campaign. I had an idea. Kind of want to, uh, I want to, try to have like a dungeon delve um i didn't want to have like a mega dungeon but I, I wanted to have one that's a little longer than some of the shorter dungeons i've done in the past and that make the series go a little longer i've been doing some um i've been doing a lot of three like trilogies i'll do like three episodes and then the story's over but a lot to be fair a lot of the stories that i'm kind of cooking up tend to be you know three three uh acts in a row but this one, I think, might go a little longer. I don't know. I, that's solo play, right? It's a lot of times so stuff is random. Um, so I don't know. I'm planning on it being longer with how I'm going to organize uh, using Axbane's deck of many dungeons. Uh, it's going to be a randomly generated dungeon. I have an idea, of course, uh, for the mission. And then I'm going to send them into the dungeon. The dungeon is going to be gener uh, randomly generated by Axbane's deck of many dungeons. So those of you that have been watching my channel know that this is probably one of the best gaming accessories I ever bought for solo play because it tells you when monsters appear and where traps appear. So it pretty much is a one-shop stop and it, it keeps me necessarily away from random tables. The only random tables I have are for the actual monsters that pop up. Even these cards has a list of monsters you could roll uh, for your characters to encounter, but I like to tailor mine a little bit more. Thus, I have encounter tables, which are available up on itch.io with the Dells and Dangers download uh, as part of the whole package. You can download those and uh, have your own encounter tables, make your own, whatever you'd like to do. Anyway, so, uh, so this campaign, uh, the background I have for it is I've decided uh, to use one of the power groups in my world of Mevin, uh, the world of Argos, uh, in the Swordlands. Uh, those of you that have been watching my videos know that I um, have a, a world that I've designed and most of my adventures take place there. I will be getting, I'll be showing the map before the next, uh, or, you know, in the, in the video, I'll show you where the characters are going and so forth. And um, the group, the power group that I've decided is going to be the focus of this particular storyline that I have roughly popped up in my head is the spell league uh they were founded in tranistal which is to the east of the Swordlands in 1034 new, new era 1034 their mission was and still is to plumb the depths of the lost runes and tombs to find and preserve the spells of the world the magic users of this organization often hire adventurers to lend support on their quests however their membership is restricted to that of wizards illusionists and clerics of mystica and zather they are not an evil organization but are a zealous one to the members of this group, the arcane lore of the world is more important than life, theirs or others. They sometimes overstep their bounds in their search for what they, which they seek. And one part of their mission is to keep the spells of the world out of the hands of evil, at least what the League sees as evil. And the main lore house in the Swordlands is at the Temple of Mystica in Argos. So, uh, my adventure is actually going to begin in Northgate. There is a chapter house there for the Spell League. And our 
main character, a member of the Spell League, is Grandin Hendelstone. He is a uh, human wizard. Now, um, I'm starting these characters out at first level because I, I want to I want this uh, campaign to spread out over several sessions so you can all see how the leveling system works. Some of you have already seen that in some of my older videos for Delves and Dangers, but I want to I want to keep that going. So this is going to be Grand, uh, Grandin uh, Hendelstone, and he is a newly recruited member of the Spell League and is out to prove himself with the Spell League elites. And I will be using these Eternal Flame dice that I got from BaronofDice.com. I love these dice. Uh, somebody's already commented on the dice and how cool they look, and they are cool. They're some of the best dice that I've ever owned. I, I guess they're resin dice. I don't know, but I really like them. So um, that's Grandin Hendelstone and his dice that I'll be using to represent him. Then next up, he has recruited three adventurers to his cause to help him delve into a, uh, a underground delve in search of something that will be revealed in episode one. And so the people he is recruiting... Uh, all these characters I made in the lunch hour, by the way, or lunch half hour, actually. I only get a half hour for lunch where I teach. <laughs> so uh, I made all these characters in a half hour session of lunch. Um, so that, you know, that's how easy it is to create characters. So this is Claudi Claudia Softpaw, and she is a Felcat thief. So she's going to be his trap and door specialist, being able to open doors and stuff. And um, so I put her together there. You can see her stats, I think. If you pause the screen, you can take a look at her stats and see where she's at. Um, like I said, they're all one. Now, one thing to st I want to point out about Claudia here is I gave her ringmail as a thief. So what that means is, because that's a medium armor, it's going to increase her armor score, but it's also going to give her minus 3D to stealth rolls. Not necessarily thievery, like picking locks or picking pockets or stuff like that. Maybe picking pockets, maybe. But any thievery rolls that don't necessarily involve moving silently or whatever, uh, I have gave her ringmail that she's wearing underneath this uh, outfit of hers. So... Um, and that's her. Now, this miniature has a short bow in there. Huh, maybe I should add a short bow to her equipment. Maybe I'll do that. Anyway, but uh, you can see the rest of her stats there. And that is Claudia Southpaw, Softball. And I am using a new set of dice I got by Baron of Dice uh, for her. These are going to be her. See the daggers and skulls? Are pretty, pretty awesome. I love these dice. So that's going to be Claudia's dice that we're using in this uh, session. All right, next up is, move my dice around so you can see the character sheets, blah, 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 make sure everything's on screen. All right, next up is, a, now you, you all know, you all know I almost always have to have a hare foot in my parties. They're my favorite uh, race to play. So this is Theo Shieldfoot. Uh, he is a hare foot cleric of Aegis, the god of protection, or Retha, sorry, Retha, the goddess of luck. So, uh, he, uh, this, this is, we're going to have to pretend this pick is actually a Warhammer. <laughs> I don't unfortunately have a halfling dressed in armor with a Warhammer and, and he's kind of got a little bracer on that's his shield. So he has a, he has a shield and chain mail, bring his armor to three. There's his stats. You can take a look at him. Um, so that's Theo, uh, shield foot. And I'm going to be using these cool Chessex frosted blue dice, uh, for him in this adventure. So those are going to be his dice. Then the final member of the team, because those of you that know my solo play role playing game, especially with Delves and Danger, like to play four characters. And so this one is going to be the final member is the muscle of the group. And that is Kranos Silverbark as an elf warrior and um, wearing play mail and a shield. And he is a worshiper of Silvatar, but is. You know, he's kind of a knight. He's an, I have his idea as an elvish knight. So in my game, I don't really have a knight profession. So I go with warrior, but he lives by a, a code, an elvish code. And he also is a very devout follower of Silvatar. So that is going to be Kranos Silver Bark. So you can check him out. And then I'm going to be using um, these Chessex dice. I can't remember the... can't remember the... Uh, type or whatever the the kind that they call this but i really kind of like these it's kind of 
elfish, but also has like a, a, a hint of like solidness to it. So like, I thought those were really good for an elf warrior slash knight. They have a little bit of green in them, but they, you know, green and blue. So that is the Spell League Expeditionary Force that is going to be going out into the world, uh, into a delve looking for something. And I'm going to be revealing all of that in the next episode, episode one, when we kind of get right into it. Um, so the background of this is Grandin, uh, like I said, newly joined the Spell League, has met with the representatives of the Spell League in Northgate and has been accepted for membership. He had to go through various tests and had to prove himself. And now the leaders of the Spell League have a mission for him. And they're going to send him on that mission. And they asked him to recruit his team. Uh, they gave him the resources he needed to do that. All of his team members are being paid beyond what they're going to find in any delve. And uh, any spells or scrolls or spell books that are captured or found uh, will go to the Spell League. Any other treasure, for the most part, can be decided upon amongst uh, the characters. And sometimes Spell League operatives will take a specific magic item and add it to the coffers of the spell league sometimes they just use it as payment to their team but uh he hires them all in northgate and uh they will be heading out on their mission uh that i will detail in episode one but i wanted to kind of get the background out of the way so you understand what direction the story is going to go uh, i have an idea of what the MacGuffin is and uh beyond that though i I maybe have one or two ideas about maybe a villain. I don't know how it's going to play into the randomness. We'll see. But I have an idea for a villain uh, or villains to face them as they head into the delve or before the delve or whatever. And I guess you'll just have to kind of chime in and see. And I think the uh, enemies will fit in nicely, the villains. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. Anyway, so that's going to be the adventure. They're going to go searching for something that's of interest to the Spell League. And it's going to be Grandin's uh, maiden voyage, so to speak. And he has already hired on his Spell League expeditionary force. And we're going to see where they go, what they do, what they're looking for, and the challenges that they run into on their way to finding it. So that I in a very quick video, but uh, I wanted to bring them up. Now, the, I, I thought about creating the characters on screen but i did have that extra time at lunch so i said you know what no i'm just going to create them and it's, so just those of you that want to know how to create a um, delves and dangerous character i have several videos in which that happens uh character creation uh, but it is very simple uh, i designed it to be very simple uh but still has i think it has a nice depth of options and those people out there that have played and have been uh commenting you can probably attest to that how easy it is to create a character um so that if your character dies in the middle of things, uh, they do. Now, I will say one more thing uh, before I sign off of this video is I am trying to decide whether to add Daring Dice from my uh, role-playing game, Daring and Dangers, to this particular adventure because they're going to be doing quite a bit of dungeon delving and it can be very dangerous. And they do have a cleric and the cleric has provided them with healing stones. That's one of the powers of the, the profession. But... Should I add Daring Dice? Um, I will probably <laughs> end up making the video uh, of the first episode before this one drops. So I don't know <laughs> if you'll answer it. I know uh, Tabletop Wanderer is adding Daring Dice into his um, Vigilant, Elven Vigilante uh, series that he's running right now, which is awesome, by the way. You should check it out. I'll put, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, he's using Delves and Dangers, and it's really a, kind of a cool take on how to use Delves and Dangers for something that's not necessarily dungeon delving. Very excited about that. Uh, Solo Spelunking did something very similar, too. He had kind of a vigilante, the bat uh, fell, fell crest. Uh, so I will link there as well, because um, they're both non-dungeon crawly games, and Delves and Dangers works perfectly well for what they're doing. In fact, it's pretty exciting to watch. They're really doing a great job with their videos. So you should check those out. Anyway, uh, Tabletop Wanderer has added Daring Dice to his fantasy Delves and Dangers game because he's kind of doing a hybrid between my pulp uh, rule, rule set Daring and Dangers and this. And it would be, it's very easy to add. I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I'll make a decision before, before I make the next video. But uh, if you see those pop up, that's why. Uh, I, just, I decided maybe because... 
they're going to be delving so long that maybe they're going to need a little extra help. Uh, but then again, I designed this game to be pretty dangerous, thus the name. And so adding daring dice will make it that less dangerous. It still will make it impossible for them to be defeated or die or whatever. But I might, I think I want to test out exactly how well they do with, or how daring dice do in this series, uh, this uh, system. I'm sure, that, I mean, the bones of daring and dangers is pretty much exactly the bones of Dells and dangers. So I'm sure it'll work, but I guess... Uh, and then I don't want to randomly determine it. I want to make a decision. So I guess what? I guess you'll have to wait until next video to see what I decided, <laughs> whether they're going to use Daring Dice or not. Uh, Daring Dice, I believe in one of my series using Basic Fantasy, I used Luck Dice. And it's pretty much exactly the same thing, except it's modified a little bit to make it more um, um, fit better into the Delves and Dangers system. Um, you can see them in action in my Daring and Dangers videos and the playlist, look up Daring and Dangers. I use them to quite, quite a good effect there. I just don't know if I, I guess the philosophical question I'm wrestling with is, do I want to keep this game dangerous or do I want to make it a little easier for them to survive simply because they're going to be going through quite a long delve? Ah, so I will make that decision and you will know by the beginning of next episode, whether I'm using Daring Dice with these characters or not. So, that's it for this episode. Thank you for coming along on this journey with me. I hope you come back to see uh, episode one to see where the Spell League Expeditionary Force is going to be heading and what they're going to be doing. So, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate all that you guys are doing for my channel. And thank you for everything. And so, until next time, keep on rolling dice and playing games. Mage Hammer out.